What is up guys, it's your boy Rashad, man, coming to you with another video, guys. This is a pretty good one. I'm gonna show you how to convert your electric mini bike to a freaking monstrous gas big block 212 Predator, baby. So uh, I'm gonna make this video really short. I'm just gonna go over what you need and how to do it, man. All the same thing. Um, it's got a 1000 watt electric motor on there, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. Got bigger plans, guys. I'm gonna stick this the 212 on there pretty common swap uh, i want to show you what you need to remove and uh how to do it so our first parts list here is if you look and see we have our max torque clutch here it's a three quarter inch clutch with number 35 chain and as you can see in the top left corner there we have our four bolts and i also have the throttle cable that i ordered off ebay to replace the current electric throttle cable they also include the cable there and if you go into our four bolts, we have five sixteenths thread. And I also have this angled piece of steel that's six inches of mounting bracket from Ace Hardware. And back on those bolts, you know, they're just one and a half inch and you'll get washers and lock bolts to go with everything. So get, getting back to the picture, you can see that the mounting bolts, there are four in each corner. And the top one is a 12 millimeter. The bottom one is a 13 millimeter. I had an impact gun, so I was able to make really quick work of this. Just going to blast it uh, each four corners, boom, and then boom, 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 and you're all set, guys. And the whole unit should just fall out. And after that is complete, we'll go to the new stand the bike up and lift the entire thing out. You want to make sure all of your wires are disconnected, and you'll have a clean frame. Next step, I took that Predator 212 motor and I stuck it in there, and just to do a quick test fit. And as you can see, it won't fit properly, so I have a solution for that. The main problem you're going to run into is if you see that drain plug bolt on the front, it's going to be hitting on the frame, preventing the motor from sitting all the way down on the frame. But no worries, you'll just need a Dremel with a metal cutoff wheel. Wheel, and I'm just cutting the the media portion off this metal so it'll fit flush up against the frame. And you don't want to go too deep here, guys. You don't want to hit your block because it's just aluminum; it'll slice right through it. So just be very careful here as you can see the Dremel is jumping around so it will just take your time here uh, just take your time and get it done right and uh, what I also did is you want to cut a, a relief cut for like a flat head fitting just in case you need to get in there and you'll be able to see it here and on this frame just take a look at the plastic the way I cut it. I just cut a little square shaped deal uh, it's kind of jagged but hey you won't be able to see it much it's just to get it to fit in the frame perfectly and look at that frame bolt right there. I'm sorry, the oil pan bolt. I cut just a little slight indent in there, just in case I ever need to get in there with a uh, flathead screwdriver. But there's also one on the back that you can use to drain the oil at any point. So that'll be fine also. Next thing guys, we're gonna go ahead and mount this motor inside the frame. And as you'll be able to tell, it'll slide right in and sit flat on that motor plate this time which is exactly what we want as you can see it's fitting flush everything's lined up nothing is hitting the only thing that might touch a little bit is the top of the head there but it's not a super big concern I was able to push that plastic in just a little bit more if you have a heat gun you can try to flex that plastic uh, just to make it fit better but as you can see here the, the frame doesn't really hit anymore where that plastic was at and the motor is sitting flush up against the metal plate so that we can get ready for the next step which is drilling. Once we drill, we'll be able to uh, get our motor to fasten correctly. And I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that clutch on. And before you do any drilling, you wanna make sure everything is lined up properly. Slide your clutch onto the shaft. And then after we slide the clutch onto the shaft, we're gonna then get our chain and line it up. You wanna make sure you have perfect alignment because any misalignment will cause the chain and the clutch to wear prematurely and it will just cause big issues as far as it'll cause extra heat in the system and you just don't you just want to make sure that it's lined up properly so I'm going to take extra step here not not going to rush this step this is very critical take your clutch slide it on you have your chain it slides on properly and then in this step here I'm going to take an extra second to look at how in case you don't know how to remove a chain with the master link Look at your master link there. It's going to be the one with the little clip on it. So you take a pair of needle nose pliers. And if you look at how I position the needle nose pliers on the chain, you push that clip 
to the backwards position and that allows you to break the chain loose uh, it might take a little bit to get it on correctly it's a it's kind of tedious process but it's not too hard once you push that clip backwards it'll pop right out and after that's complete you can begin to fit the chain that's and determine how many links you need to cut out to make the chain fit properly and I use that same Dremel with the same cutoff wheel I'm sorry I couldn't get it on video because it was really hard to control the Dremel and hold the really small chain so just cut all you do is cut the uh, little knobs off make it flush and push the pins through and you can break that chain loose very easy very easy there alright next step is a very critical one this is how you will figure out how to mount the bolts in the right position for the engine so that you can drill your holes and everything be lined up I was able to get everything on the first try using this tip first thing you do is you get a little bit of paint it could be fingernail polish luckily for me I had some glow paint laying around so I dipped my screws in the paint after I lined up my chain and I stuck them in the holes of the motor so after doing that I was able to easily make mark points to drill with my 5 16 metal drill bit with my cordless screwdriver I wasn't able to show it on video also because it was really hard to control that drill you want to get it done right but just use that technique put paint on the end of the drill holes stick them in the holes and drill it out and then you'll be all set to mount your 5 16 bolts into those holes yo what is up guys so it is the next day now it's really warm out here uh, and I just want to show you I'm almost done with this mini bike I had to uh, cut off kind of quickly yesterday because it got dark but uh, this is where we're at so far I have the mini bike uh, the engine mounted up pretty well and I ran into some issues with the chain uh, yesterday I didn't show you guys on camera but I tried to get the chain tensioner to work but I had some issues so I uh, tried to drill basically what was happening is the chain tensioner made the chain too tight I didn't want to cut out too many more links, so I'm going to show you guys an awesome idea and the best way to uh, fix your chain tensioning problem. So first thing you're going to need, you're going to need this little six inch piece of mounting bracket from, I got this from Ace Hardware, it's like two bucks, three bucks. Uh, and then you'll use your stock bolts for the chain tensioner there. And the next thing you'll need, oh, right there, next thing you'll need is you'll need that same 5 16 drill bit that you use to drill the mounting holes for your frame there and then you'll need a pack of springs cheap springs from Home Depot also three bucks here there's an assortment uh, there's the dimensions there if you want to save those a little closer this is the ones I'll use and the last thing is because it's nowhere to really mount the spring on here get you a little cheap hose clamp Looks like these are the one inch, a little over one inch in diameter. Just get those, that way it'll mount around here tight. And then that's what I'll use to hook my spring on to assemble chain tool. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill out these holes so that my bolt can fit through it. As you can see, it's just a little bit too big, so I got my 5 16 so I'm gonna go ahead and drill that out and I'll be right back, guys. So I've got to show you guys which holes I drill out. I just used to go ahead and drill all of them out so I have more options when it comes to essentially mounting up that bolt. So Oops. Use your safety equipment, guys. like to go in the middle one here because I'm going to use this one for the other boat I'm going to come in here you also want to get another washer and stick on there just so it'll slide freely so we go this configuration here we go this provided little spacer and you go here slide it on like that then your bolts and then you'll see how it mounts up once I go ahead and put it on here but what I what I typically do here is oh, let's see if It'll go up under here like that and I'll show you how to do your springs also so there we go. Go this is the final product here I had to retreat to indoors to finish the rest of this because it started raining which kind of sucks because I wanted to ride it but as you can see this is my chain tensioner setup from the last video I kind of changed it up I began to use the first hole 
and then I have my bolt all in the last hole on the bracket that I showed you earlier. That way it gives the spring more leverage to keep that chain very tight. Oh man, it's almost perfect guys. This is the final result. Just gonna do a quick B-roll here. Perfect chain tension, absolutely perfect. And if you look at the alignment, the alignment is also spot on. With this 72 sprocket in the back, it's gonna be absolutely mental acceleration. Mental. Look at that, I'm barely twisting it. It's already wanting to take off just with my two fingers. So that lets you know, this mini bike is gonna be an absolute monster. So there's gonna be a lot more content. Let me know if you guys like stuff like this uh, and what mods you wanna see. I may do a uh, header here just to get a little bit more power and I may do some carburetor adjustments such as bigger jets and things like that. And just a side note guys, this is actually my second mini bike build. This one is my other one that I didn't show on camera. I call her Pikachu because she would definitely shock you with the acceleration. Uh, this has a smaller sprocket, so the top end is a little bit better, a little bit less acceleration. But I now have two in my collection. Two monsters. I don't know, guys, if I get enough subscribers, I may have to do a build and uh, give one of these bad boys away. Uh, depends on if you guys like this. Later, Invoke Pro out.